The 4th of July will no longer be declared as an American holiday, but as the day the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day! Everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I'm here to review Independence Day Resurgence. So, Independence Day Resurgence is written and directed by Roland Emmerich. You have the talents of Jeff Goldblum, Liam Hemsworth, Bill Pullman, Micah Monroe, Joey King, Judd Hirsch, and many, many more talents in this film. So, Independence Day Resurgence takes place exactly 20 years after the original. Original Independence Day and 20 years later you know after all the aliens have vanished back in 1996 the aliens have come back to go ahead and take over Earth so it's up to Jeff Goldblum and the others to go ahead and stop these aliens so that way the aliens once again don't have to come back and I'm gonna be honest I was really looking forward to Independence Day resurgence once I saw the first trailer because man that first trailer was absolutely spectacular and the second trailer was great too but definitely the first trailer was where I was like holy crap this could be a really good sequel and also because I personally loved yes you heard that right you guys loved Independence Day. Independence Day is actually one of my favorite movies of all time. It's cheesy as hell, it's ridiculous, and that's honestly why it's such a fantastic popcorn flick because of how cheesy it is. The movie has so many great cheesy one-liners. There's so much energy, there's so much charisma, with great chemistry with Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum, and that's what honestly makes Independence Day one of my favorite movies of all time, personally. Of course, I wasn't expecting resurgence to reach on a level of Independence Day, but I was hoping there would be at least a solid popcorn flick because it had a lot of potential. This was definitely a really enjoyable popcorn flick. What I saw in this film definitely gave me everything I wanted from an Independence Day film. It had really good cheesy one-liners. The action, the destruction, all of that stuff was really great. The setup for this world of what happened 20 years after Independence Day, that was all really great. And I was honestly having the time of my life with Independence Day Resurgence for the first half. Yeah, you heard that right. The first half of Independence Day Resurgence was actually really fun to me. Like, I actually thought for a while this was going to be an underrated film from 2016. I actually thought for a while I was going to enjoy this movie more than most people because I know the reviews for this movie really have not been all that good. I'll get more into the second half, but of course I do have more of my pros to say about Independence Day Resurgence. Now, of course, Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum, just like in the original Independence Day, is still a ton of fun. There's still a lot of charisma to this guy. And, you know, you just can't help but enjoy this guy's presence because of the way he does this aw, 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 aw. Like, you know, the Jeff Goldblum mannerisms that we're so used to seeing at this point. And Jeff Goldblum is still a lot of fun in Independence Day Resurgence. You know, with Will Smith not being back this time around, you could say the more lies on him. Well, Liam Hemsworth is considered the main star, so he's technically the Will Smith replacement, because if you look at the credits, Liam Hemsworth is listed first, then Jeff Goldblum second, even though personally I think it should have been the other way around. And as far as Liam Hemsworth goes, he did a pretty good job here. Sure, in this film, does he do a lot of... Yes, he does make a lot of those expressions during this film, but you could tell Liam Hemsworth was having fun, and he did have some charisma to him. He's no Jeff Goldblum or Will Smith, but 
he still had some of it to him and I still really enjoyed Liam Hemsworth for what he was given this film. I still really enjoyed Bill Pullman as the former president of the United States because obviously he's not going to be the president of the United States. It would be honestly weird if he was the president for 20 years but it's still good to see Bill Pullman back even if he now has that beard so he doesn't look exactly like the Bill Pullman from the original film but He's still a really good presence. And I really enjoyed Micah Monroe from The Guest, and it follows Micah Monroe. You know, for what I've seen of her, she's a very talented actress. I really like her. And yes, Mae Whitman is in the original film. She's the one that played Bill Pullman's daughter in the original film. So yes, it is weird that she's not here, but I think the reason they casted Micah Monroe was because Bill Pullman's daughter was blonde, and you know Mae Whitman is a brunette. So I can kind of see why they didn't bring her back, but then again, she could just dye her hair blonde if that was the case. Anyways, Micah Monroe, I still really enjoyed her here. I still really enjoyed Judd Hirsch as David Jeff Goldblum's father. Brent Spiner is still pretty enjoyable as Oaken. And I really did enjoy Joey King as this girl that's part of the kids plot, which yes, I'm going to get to more of that later. The destruction and the action for the first half at least. All of that stuff, as I said, was a ton of fun. What made the first half of this film honestly so fun and so memorable was how they were filmed. They were exciting. I was at the edge of my seat. Especially all of that destruction that you guys have been seeing in the marketing for this film. That was seriously Wow! It's a whole lot of fun and it's probably my favorite scene out of the entire movie because that whole entire destruction scene was filmed very well. You got plenty of destruction and if you're going into this film hoping for plenty of destruction you're definitely going to get that for sure. So for what it was worth for at least the first half of the film, I thought the action was well filmed. It was a lot of fun to watch. And there is this huge spectacle that Roland Emmerich always adds in his films to make you really immersed into what you're seeing. Even with the second half, and I'm going to get more into the second half, but even with the second half, I'll still give credit where credit is due. Roland Emmerich still does a really good job of bringing that spectacle in the second half whenever there's action happening. And speaking of Roland Emmerich, I do think personally his direction really is spot on. I still feel like the movie from beginning to end, even if I wasn't really into the second half, his direction was still very solid in my opinion. The cinematography in the film does look very beautiful. It is very well shot. The movie does have some comic relief that worked very well in my opinion. In fact, some of the moments, mainly the first half, once again, it reminded me so much of 1996 Independence Day. And I do really like how the movie set up everything. Like you really get a very good idea of where everyone has been since 20 years later after the events of what happened in 1996. Some of the technology that they even have in this time now was honestly very fascinating to me. And I will say as far as positives go, I did kind of care for Will Smith's son and really like the first half of the movie. But now the negatives come in for this film and there is so many problems for this movie unfortunately. And I've already said it, the second half. This movie crumbles to the ground after the first half, in my opinion of course. Because this movie loses the fun, the spirit, the energy that honestly the first half had. The first half captured what the original Independence Day had. It had the energy and the charisma. Yes, I know Liam Hemsworth isn't the most charismatic guy, but I still thought he carried some charisma in this film. And even in the first half, Will Smith's son, although probably the least charismatic actor in this film, if I have to be honest, he even had moments like little moments of charisma but then all of that seems lost in the second half because the second half 
has too many characters that they introduce. We don't even need these characters. It introduces certain plot points that are very unnecessary. The one plot point that really sticks out with me is the plot point with Judd Hirsch and these kids. Like, why did we need this plot? There was no need for this plot to even happen. It didn't serve a point. There's no development with this plot. We know nothing about these kids, yet they're just shoehorned into the movie. And Judd Hirsch, I really enjoy him in this film, but poor him, didn't really have a whole lot to do in this film. Whereas in the first Independence Day, you know, he was there with David a lot and he got to serve his purpose. Whereas in this film, he's honestly separated from David for the majority and they're barely on screen together, which is another thing that was so underwhelming about Independence Day. Another thing that I thought was a really dumb decision on Roland Emmerich and the other writer's part is the fact that Dr. Oaken, yeah, the one that we thought died from the original Independence Day? No, it turns out that he wasn't dead. He's just been in a coma for 20 years. What? 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 Really? 20 years in a coma? Yet, when he actually wakes up from his 20-year-old coma, he has to actually wake up when the aliens return. Okay, I know in movies there's a thing called suspension of disbelief, but come on now. That's just really pushing it. I know this is Roland Emmerich we're talking about, and I actually don't mind when Roland Emmerich does stuff like this, but... You're pushing it there, Roland Emmerich. You're really, really pushing the suspension of disbelief right there. The other unfortunate thing about Independence Day Insurgents is that most of the performances really weren't all that compelling. Most of the actors just felt like they were there. Even William Fickner. I was bored watching William Fickner because it just felt like he was in this movie for the sake of being in this movie. That goes for a lot of the actors. And even Michael Monroe, even though I think she still gave a solid performance, there's even a few times in the film where I can kind of feel like she didn't want to be in this film either. It just kind of felt like they were in this film because they needed to be in this film to get that paycheck. And that's kind of sad, honestly, when I think about that. Because the first Independence Day, everyone looked like they really wanted to be in that film. Everyone brought so much energy to it. And not enough of that is brought into Independence Day resurgence. The execution for the film, really with the second half, it does get messy. It's so all over the place. And unfortunately, with the two hour and 30 minute running time this film has, which is about the same running time the first film had, you could definitely feel the running time. Because the first Independence Day, I was never bored, honestly. Like two hours and 30 minutes in Independence Day, it flew by for me. For Resurgence, like I said with the first half, I was really invested. So for the first half, I thought it actually had really good pacing. It kept moving and moving and moving. That's all like halfway through the movie, that fast pacing just stops. And it just has all of these things to really set up for the third Independence Day when I'm really thinking about this movie. There's so much setup that they don't even focus on what Independence Day is all about. It's just about having all of these aliens and all of these destruction, even though you do get enough of that, but it just feels like for the majority of the movie, really with the second half, it kind of felt like it was more focused on setup for the third film, rather trying to mainly focus on the aliens attacking the Earth again. The actor who plays Will Smith's son not a really great replacement for Will Smith. I don't think he's a terrible actor, 
but I do think he is very bland and he's very on charismatic he really was losing the charm that will smith had i could tell he was trying in the film you could tell that he tried to bring the will smith charisma and i give props to the actor for that but personally it just wasn't really working for me i kind of cared for his character in the beginning then it's like that kind of gets lost because the film is more focused on the aliens and i would say after the destruction that happens in this movie, that whole thing of us trying to really care for Will Smith's son, that gets thrown out the window and you just forget about it very, very quick. Most of the cheesy lines, the comic relief, fall flat. There really are nowhere near as memorable cheesy lines as the first Independence Day had be because there were cheesy lines everywhere at Independence Day and that's what made that so fun but here in Resurgence there isn't really enough of that and when I look back at the comedy of this film most of it already has slipped my mind. There's also too many characters to follow in this film. And yes, granted, the first Independence Day was like that. But the thing about the first Independence Day is that there was a balance to it. The movie knew how to balance giving a fair amount of screen time to each of the characters. While this one, it doesn't know how to balance giving screen times to each of the characters. Because we have too many characters we're following, as well as the characters that are introduced that really don't have to be in this film. That's where I feel like the movie just goes all over the place because it just jumps from one plot to another plot to another plot that it does make Resurgence feel like a clunky movie. Even when I was very underwhelmed throughout the entire second half of this movie, I was hoping I was going to come out of this movie praising the climax for how much fun it is. And it's not. I was bored watching the climax the action is not poorly filmed it's still well filmed roland emmerich still brings the spectacle of independence day i have no problem with it in terms of how it's filmed in terms of how it's edited it's just that i was not engaged and the last problem i have with resurgence is how it sets up for the third Independence Day. Or as I think they like to call it, ID4 Part 2, because this was originally gonna be titled ID4. You guys, Independence Day Resurgence, I was having a lot of fun with it for the first half. I really was having such a great time. I thought this was gonna be one of the most underrated movies of 2016. And then the second half comes and it loses all the magic, all of the spirit, the energy that the original Independence Day had. Roland Emmerich and his writers, they do try, but once we get to the second half, it gets clunky, you follow too many characters, the comic relief really, really falls flat, the actors, the characters that were introduced are nowhere, nowhere near as memorable as the ones we see in Independence Day. I was very underwhelmed, you guys. I don't think Resurgence is by any means a terrible movie. The best way to describe it is underwhelming. It's a very underwhelming sequel, in my opinion. Independence Day Resurgence is one of the most disappointing movies of 2016, and I'm going to give it two out of four stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you guys think about Independence Day Resurgence. Also, you guys, I have actually reviewed Independence Day last year on the 4th of July with my guest star, Justin Watches Movies. So if you actually want to check out my review for Independence Day, I will leave a link to that review in the description down below. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!